This news page will dynamically display all the posts from your website. And this setup could easily be used for a blog as well. So below this hero area, you can see that we have a sidebar to the right with a search field. We have link to the post categories and we link to our social media. And in the middle, we have a list of our blog posts with a featured image, the post title. We have the publish date, the category, which is linked. And uh, we have an excerpt and a read more text. So this is the list showing the latest. It's in um, date order. And if I want to display older entries, I can just click the pagination. Let's get started. So we jump into the development site. And first of all, I want to recycle some of the design settings that we made on the home page where we use the blog grid, which is an, another uh, setting for uh, the blog module in Divi. So here we go. To recycle some of the settings here, I will enable the visual builder. And this is maybe something that I should have done when we created the home page, but better now than never. So I will edit the blog post module and just right click the purple top bar and I will say apply styles to active presets. So this means that I will save all the design settings we made with the fonts and styling in the blog module and this will become the default design. So now I can exit this page and when we head back to the news page uh, and publish a blog post module, it will already have the correct fonts and styling. So I go to the news page, which for now is empty, looks kind of dull. So let's fix that by enabling the visual builder. And we will not build from scratch this time. And uh, we will not use a pre-made layout, but we will clone an existing page because I want to reuse, recycle this hero area from the About Us page. You can see that it has the same look and feel. So I will use that on the news page as well and just switch the images and the copy. So we click clone existing page. And this is also a great time saver in Divi. So I see a list of my existing pages and I will choose the About Us page to clone. Okay, so now I will simply delete the stuff that we won't need on this page. So for example, this section, I will just hit the trash can and uh, I will delete this one as well. And I will delete this one, this one and this one. So we're just keeping the header. Okay, so let's switch the copy in this one. And, uh, let's see, we have be informed and our latest news. Maybe we can use some capital letters there. Muse, news, okay. And let's switch the background image by going to the section settings, background, choosing the image. And uh, let's find a nice picture, this one. There we go. So we didn't have to make everything from scratch again. So let's create a new section for our blog post uh, content. So it's a regular section. And I want to have one wide column and uh, uh, one a bit smaller column. So two thirds and one third. And to the left, we will use the blog module. There we go. And you can see that it uses the um, blog grid design. But since this is a more narrow design, it's just one blog grid item per, per column or per row. So uh, let's change that. We go to the design settings, layout. And instead of grid, we should choose full width. It looks a little bit the same, but it isn't. Uh, and now we should just make some tweaks. We want to remove the box shadow. So let's go down to box shadow and choose none. Okay, already looks better. And uh, that's about it actually. It's kind of nice design, I would say. This works fine for a blog page or a news page. 
we go back to the content tab, click content, and uh, we want to choose five blog posts. And uh, the reason for that is you don't want to have too much images and, and stuff on one page. It could be heavy to load, a long page load time, which is bad for your SEO and user experience. And uh, you also, uh, I also want to display the feature with the pagination. And we have six blog posts, so that's one of the reasons why I choose to display five posts on this page. So let's uh, go down to elements. And on the home page, we didn't want to display the pagination, but this time I do. So I will choose yes for show pagination. And there we have it. It displays the older entries, but it's baby blue. Doesn't look too good. So let me click the pencil, the shortcut to the pagination text styling. And let's choose the correct font, which is Carla. And let's choose the correct color, which is gold. Yeah, so there we have it. This is the pagination. So let's create the sidebar. And that's this design. And you don't have to use the WordPress widgets and stuff as in the old days. Now we can create this directly in the DV Builder. So I'll start out with a search module. There we go. And we can have a placeholder text inside. We can say search. Which elements to display. I don't think we need the search button. So we can remove that, being minimalistic. And uh, here we can decide which type of content that should be included in the search results. And I will exclude pages. I just want this to be a news article search. And I want to display all categories. We want to have a heading on top of the search field. So I will actually add a text module above. And we can say find more. And let's make that an H3. Okay, and we'll put that above the search field. Now let's reduce the space here. More like Okay, I want to add a divider. We go to the design tab, line, and I want to use this light gray color. Below this one, we should add our categories. So text module, and we say categories, it's a heading, and then we have inspiration, and we have case, which is our two categories. So I like to type all text before I style it. And uh, let's mark these two and uh, press here for a bullet list. And let's make this one a heading three as well. Okay, and we will link this one. And I think it's news category inspiration. Choose OK, and let's make a link for the cases as well. News, category, case. So I can just duplicate this divider so we don't have to style it again like that. And uh, we should now add some social media follow icons. So let's start with the text module and say follow us. And let's make that a H3. And uh, now we will include the social media icons. So I just click here for adding a new module. And now I will add from library, which is my social media icons from the library. And they are white, so that's why I can see them. If you can't find them here, we can go to the wireframe mode. And uh, I can click this gear icon. And uh, we can go back now to the visual display, the desktop. So I go to the Facebook to change that one. It should be gold instead of white. And um, the design tab, the icon settings for the Facebook icon. And we set that to gold. And when it's hovered, let's click the hover icon. And uh, that's how it looks now, not too good. So I want to change the icon color to white on hover. 
so it's white on gold. So this is the idle design and this is the hover design. Perfect. So let's click the back button. Now I will copy the styles from the Facebook icon, copy item styles, paste item styles. Where do we have that? There we go. Paste item styles. I don't know why I have to do that twice, but hey, as long as it works. Okay, but this is kind of floating in the air. So let's let's change that. And maybe also let's go to the search field. I think I forgot one setting. Design, and we have the search text. There we go. So field font, yes. My eye caught something there. Let's change that to Carla. So I will create a, a gold golden frame for this one, a golden border. So to do that, uh, I will open the settings for this row and I will go to the second column, clicking the cogwheel and to the design tab and to the border tab. And uh, I will I will add a border width of one pixel like that. And I want it to be in gold. Looks a little bit better, but we need some spacing here. So let's fix that. So I browse down in the design tab and um, no, I browse up and there we have the spacing tab. So let's add 40 pixels of padding and uh, we click this chain to make it apply to both top and bottom and we do the same thing for right and left. So now it looks a lot better. Okay, I can see that I've actually used another row structure here. So let's fix that. But first of all, I can also see that there's a small gap here and I've used a bigger gap and that's the good old gutter width. So let's fix that first. So we go to the row settings, the design tab, sizing, use custom gutter width, yes. Drag that up to four and now we can see that the spacing is increased, but still, this shouldn't be as wide as this and we want more space for the blog feed so in the row settings i can change the column structure and i can show you two ways to do that one way is to click the column and click this icon for column structure and then i get all the column structure options here but i could also enter the row settings and from there i can drop down this list okay so now we have this design and I want to change it to this design. So that's a pretty quick way of doing it. Okay, have I missed something? Yes, I have. We have this text. So let's add some follow us text. Let's hit enter, click the paste as text icon and then paste the text. Okay, so maybe we can fix some of the spacings here. I think actually one thing we should do is to go into the divider settings, line, and it should be positioned vertically centered. And uh, I can actually extend the line position by right clicking it and say that all dividers should be vertically centered on this page, extend. So there was, was just one more, but that's a quick way of fixing it and now i can just drag here to make it a little bit more slim i can drag this one and maybe this one maybe a little less spacing here a little bit less there maybe a little less there it's a nice blog design and we are going to reuse this layout later when we create the category pages and also the search result page in the Divi theme builder. Mm -hmm.